all right so we would be starting with the session now uh, there are there are a few more participants they would be joining us as we progress so first of all uh, welcome everyone to this master class and thank you so much for joining us uh, thank you so much vishal for being here and taking out time to share your knowledge and insights with the people here so this master class is brought to you by upgrade campus So, Upgrad Campus is an online higher education platform that focuses on providing upskilling courses to college-going students. As you know, your college curriculum is is not as you know your college curriculum doesn't provide you with the right exposure to meet the industry standards. We focus on providing you with the courses that will help you stand out from the crowd and make you job ready to essentially help you land your dream job. So the main aim of this master class is to bring to you people from the industry and to give you insights from the industry out there. So hereby we bring to you today Mr. Vishwa Mohan. He is an IIT graduate. He is a staff engineer at LinkedIn. He is a technology enthusiast, a mentor, and a public speaker. So hey Vishwa, welcome to the master class. Hey, thank you. Thanks for bringing me here, and I'm looking forward for a good session today. Yeah, thank you. uh should i get started uh uh nitisha you would like to fill in before i get started you want to speak something so already here few people will be joining as we progress so we can start with the session perfect so uh uh first of all uh, uh thanks nitisha for uh, such a warm welcome and before i get started people can you put that into the chat if you can see me uh, my voice is audible to you people you can say yes or a hi in the chats to let me know that if you guys can hear me clear and loud perfect thanks for the confirmation people so uh, before i talk about what i have for you people today uh, let me quickly introduce myself because it's very important uh, this is close to around 60 to 90 minute session and i believe time is the money so before i actually talk about what i have to say you should be aware that who i am and why i am there uh, in this in this in this table i am talking to you people right so i am vishwa mohan i am a pass out from iit bhu and i have close to around 10 plus years of experience working in this it sector i have worked for the companies like oracle paypal walmart labs i have worked in the aws team of amazon for some time and i currently work as an architect for the linkedin so all this 11 years of journey i have seen both side of the tables when i was myself preparing for these companies and at the same time you know i kind of take a interview almost every day so i see both sides of the table and at the same time uh, uh, i am very fond of teaching so uh, you take any big name in the education tech education right now india or abroad i have either designed their courses or i have taught them so with all my experience of teaching thousands of students and plus from my own career uh, when you know nitisha came to me and about this webinar i felt very excited and in this next whatever minutes that we are going to talk i'll try to make you know apart from the logical things you know the concepts and what all things that we need to make it big in the industry uh, i'll try to bring more practical you know feel to it so i'll try to talk in the beginning 10 to 15 minutes i have prepared a small presentation slide for it but i'll leave the session more for your open questions because i believe the best way to answer your queries is to take your custom questions and answer to the effect right so said that uh, just give me a moment to share my screen and then we can get started Uh, all right so vishwa we would be having a 20 minutes q and a session post the master class so everybody can drop in their questions either in the chat section or the q and a section okay uh, is my voice little low nitisha because few of the students are saying that you know it's coming low no your voice is perfectly fine okay so i would request whoever is not able to hear the voice they can plug in the earphones Uh, and like we will try to like speak a little louder sure 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 okay. so let me just perfect so people can you just confirm if you can see the screen is the screen visible to you people dekh raha hai sabko screen sir 
cool so this is me and you can find more about me if you are interested on the litany but this session is not about me but you people so in order to arrange my thoughts right uh, into certain points what i have planned today is uh, i have tried to break this whole next 30 40 minutes that you no know, i'll be talking into four broad categories right so if i see the it industry it has seen a change the way we work the way we hire the way we prepare in the last couple of years and you guys guess it well all thanks to the covid 19 so first i would like to talk about that how this software engineering space has got different but what it was you know 3 or 4 years back because a lot of changed in terms of hiring a lot of has changed in terms of the work culture and a great amount has changed in terms of the opportunities that it brings to the table to all the you know budding engineers so i'll start with that and uh, the next thing that i would like to talk about that you know all of us are here to be very practical uh, knowledge vagera to apne paas hai but the one most important thing that is job right i believe all of us who have ever spent like 4 years in engineering or other different other specialization we all deserve a job right so what is the market condition right now in the coming years for all software engineers i'll talk about the software jobs in the today's market condition and three uh, if we just look about the job and don't do things which makes us employable it will be again tough right so i'll be talking about the skills that is needed to be a better software engineer right and last but not the least the ultimate thing because all of us want to travel in bmw sabke paas uh, mercedes car ho ye all you know we all dream and for that we need to have the big package and for that we have to work for our dream company so how do we do that how do we achieve our goal of that what should we learning today that tomorrow in the coming years we can afford to have our own bmw without loans uh, i'll be talking more on that so these are the four different topics i'll be covering today and then i'll take all your questions so feel free whatever that comes to your mind related to your career cool so let's get started so before i talk about you know i don't have kept a slide for this so we can just have a discussion if you have any question that you can you know talk on that so if i talk about that what has changed in the last 2 years or 2 and a half years is the the mindset of the work if i tell you you know a practical example 3 years from now if a employee used to go and tell to a manager that i'll be working from home in most of the companies at least and i have myself witness that your manager will frown upon and say that maybe you know the work from home is not from but it is for it's like work for home right so people used to have a tendency to feel that if you're working remotely if you're working from the home the work cannot be done right so one of the biggest impact this covid thing has done to this whole it system now the concept of work from home can be many years people have realized the the potential that people can even work remotely right and uh, all things that it's you know the industry that we are planning to be a part of or we already are is internet based so if you take any industry like manufacturing civil any other sector the one sector which has been almost immune to this whole covid situation has been the it sector when all the other companies who have been you know laying off people i have seen because i work for linkedin i know the numbers the number of job openings in the internet based companies has increased many fold in the last couple of years itself during this pandemic time also so as a software engineer this two years thou has been challenging on our personal uh, standards but the blessing in disguise is that as far as the jobs are concerned it has kind of opened up many many opportunities so the first and the biggest thing that i see here is now you don't have to actually be at the office physically what it means that you are any part of india and the companies are open not only you know those who are situated in india but across the globe to hire you in the fully remote jobs so like what it means in very simple words 5 years from now if you have to work for a us based company and earn salaries in dollars you had to move to the us or to the uk or any other foreign country now all thanks to this people have realized that work can be done over internet remotely and as effective as it is done in the office 
so many companies these days i have seen they have started the concept of you know the global workforce where you don't have to be in a physical space to be their employees so this i see as one of the wonderful things and this is going to improve further in coming years which gives you an excellent opportunity what it means that you are in a small town of bihar up mp anywhere and you can still work for the companies who are working say like in us california and get as much paid as the engineers who stay there right so this is one big change that i see people i hope you guys are excited on that right another change that i see is that uh you have don't have to have the physical presence right uh, uh you don't have to be in the office so with that what happens is that you can save a lot on your traveling times you can save a lot on your commute you can save a lot of the money on your stay for example uh if i talk about you come to mumbai or you come to bangalore and stay a lot of money a lot of your salary goes in your stay itself but this remote culture has enabled you that you still stay at your house in your hometown in the comfort of your parents and still you can make sure that you are getting the opportunities to work in these equally good companies so a high point here is now the covid definitely has been a challenging time emotionally challenging time mentally challenging time right health wise very challenging time to all of us but kudos to this sector which is the it which we all are part of and we are willing to be a part of for us as far as the job security and the job opportunities is concerned it has only increased many folds and we have now the opportunity to work in any part of the world with no such restrictions of you shifting to their physical location so that's what you know i would like to start this session with so that we know that you know the last two and a half years now it has been bad otherwise but for the job per se it has been really wonderful and we are moving in a very right directions fair enough people does it make sense my voice is audible perfect now the number 2 okay the scenario has changed but what is the condition right now and how do we see the software engineering roles coming up in the coming years right so as per few of the numbers that i can quote you from the linkedin during this last two years itself since the people have realized that if such kind of event again happens in the future people might not work in house cannot work from the physical location they cannot work and co work together right so the internet based industry has got a great boost right and that's why all those companies who have been working offline they are also moving to the online model right and when some company decides or tries to move to the online model what does it means there is a job for a software engineer getting created right so again because of this sluggish changes in the environment around us it has only propelled the number of jobs that we have in the it sector today so year over year i see at least 30% increase in the software engineer roles on the different platforms right now so for you or me who is in this industry right now i think this is one of the you know one of the ripest time to be part of this industry not only in terms of the number of jobs but also in terms of salary i don't know if you guys are following the news yesterday itself the microsoft has announced that they are doubling their salary package why because almost every company right now in the market has doubled their budget for paying the employees there is so much of demand for a right talent in the market that if you have the right skills if you are prepared uh, there is first of all no is no limit to the number of jobs which is available in the market but at the same time the salary is also you can't think of you know uh there's no time there in the past that the salary has been that huge for a software engineers so the market right now is absolutely hot if you have the right talent to be a part of this booming software industry people right so the first two concerns ki bhaiya job hai ki nahi job hai salary hai ki nahi there are lots of salary and has the thing changed for good for a software engineers in the last two years is there any uncertainty around it so everything has been green everything has been better as far as the software jobs are concerned right so with the first two things i would like to you know shout and say that if you have decided that i want to make it big in the it industry the industry is moving in the right directions 
So what you only need to do is that you have to ensure that you have all the skills needed to be a better software engineer. Everyone is convinced people. Are you guys clear, confident that you have done the right choice to be a part of this software industry, which is actually moving in a very right direction at a very fast pace. Now, only thing that you have to do is that be ready for this change. You have to know all things that you have to this market in a good position. Pe leke cool? Great. So now let's try to understand what are the skills needed to be a better software engineer. So there's a few specific, uh, you know, the mantra. And I have seen mostly among the freshers of people who are in that in college or who are just starting up, they do some kind of, uh, you know, common mistakes. They try to learn everything. And this, uh, you know, this, uh, this whole space of software is so vast that if you try to learn everything, your life will finish, but you will not be able to complete. So the idea is not to do everything. So I'll try to first talk on major pillars or major points where you should focus, which will make you job ready. Okay. So to crack any company, and when I say any company, it includes companies like Google, Facebook, Microsoft, LinkedIn, any big name you say in the market, what is that it takes to, you know, be a part of these companies? So there are not many things that you have to do, guys. It's only few steps. So the very first step in your preparation journey for these companies is just learn one programming language. Now here, one common mistake that I see people doing is that they try learning multiple programming languages. You'll start in January C, then you'll start in March C++, then you'll feel in June, I also download on Java, then Python, some Bhaiya and Didi from YouTube had said, so you also start learning Python. Don't do these mistakes. When you're starting up, your focus should be just one programming language, and that could be anything. If you're comfortable with C, stick to that. If you're already comfortable with C++, stick to that. You don't have to juggle between multiple programming languages. Because any good company who is going to hire you as a fresher, or even for the experienced folks as well, they don't care what programming language you use or know. What they know is that you know one minimal programming language which will help you to write the logic, right? So my advice to you people is that if you're already comfortable with one programming language, sir, just stick to it. It could be C, it could be Python, it could be C++, doesn't matter, you know? Every language has its own advantages, disadvantages, but on a high level, every, every program has almost the same thing. It's a way that you instruct your computer to do stuff, right? So you should know one programming language, but properly. In the case, if you have yet not decided or you're just starting up, you don't know which programming language to pick up. I'll say that in that case, pick one programming language, which is complete which could be either C++ or Java. Even between these two, if you ask me, I'll say Java, the reason being more like 80% of all the big companies that you see today, they have a Java stack, right? That's, that's the only reason I'll say. But otherwise, if you've already picked one language, just stick to it, sir. Don't spend your time juggling between the multiple programming language because that's not gonna help you in any way. Up ek fix karlo and then just stick to that. Fair enough. I hope, Rasmi, I already answered your question. You just stick to it. It does not matter whether you choose Python, C++, or Java. Your chances of getting into an interview in any of these big companies is not dependent on which programming language you use. It depends on how you use that programming language. So you can stick to the Python if you're comfortable with it, or else you can choose C++ or Java. But don't do this. Key, three months I'm doing Python, then two months I'm trying to learn C++. That just wastes your time. It will not help you in any ways to you know, crack the company's interview. I hope I'm clear everyone. Shall I move to the next one? People, yes, no. Can you put that into the chat? Cool. Now the second one, everyone is talking about data, right? Data is the new oil. We are taking the data different decisions. Hindi mein bolte hain, aata se sasta data ho gaya hai, right? Everything that you do, every company is tracking all your efforts. For example, if you're on e-commerce, Amazon.com, you click something, all your events of click 
is being stored they are monitoring you so that next time when you come to amazon.com they can suggest you the better items you come on linkedin you are hovering over a post you are writing a post you are sending a friend request you're writing a story all of us is being tracked not just to spy on you but to make sure that next time you comes we give you better experience more customized experience on linkedin last night i was just hovering over icici bank i was not even logged in aaj subah morning mai got a call ki loan chahiye kya and he was knowing my name and location as well that's how badly you know we are being tracked all around through this software systems so okay the the privacy and all this thing is a different debate but like how is this powered like how is this technology being powered it's all because of the massive storage and manipulation of data almost every company today these days whether it's a social media e-commerce a uh, banking company you know any company that you can think of they all are hungry for more and more data and with more data you need two things sir you need storage you need computation and everyone wants to do this fast and very efficiently and that's where knowing data structures and algorithm becomes extremely important no company in the world today will give you a job if you are not able to crack their data structures and algorithm round and the initial first few rounds will be based on data structures and algorithm itself so the step one with a programming language you know how to write the code and with step 2 you know how to write efficient code so can you can do the better storage and the better computation since today we have been you know no time in the past we have been using so much of data as of today so the importance of data structures and algorithm has also increased many folds so if you ask me out of 10 points how much point will i give to this topic i'll say 100 100 points out of 10 that's how important this topic is people am i clear have i stressed it enough mobina i'll just tell you those these are the two things the first you know a programming language like python that's not enough with python you'll just know how to write the code but you that's not enough we have to know how to write efficient code so that you would do better storage and you do a better computation and that's the step number 2 also that you need to do it can i move to the next topic people the next in the final thing that's only needed for any of you to be you know cracking these companies aage bade very nice and the last thing is the data you know as i was telling you with programming language you know how to write the code with data structures and algorithm how to optimize it but at the end of this so much of collection of data that you are doing you have to store it somewhere so that you can use it sometime later right your all the activities that we are recording on the linkedin we are storing it somewhere right so that only we can know what your preferences are what are the things that you like what are the things that you don't like right so that's all about understanding data storage space so as a software engineer you should have a good understanding of different kind of databases on a high level you don't have to go in deep but on a high level you should be aware of what is a file based storage system what is a relational database management system right what are the databases like mysql oracle postgres what are they doing what they are used for when should i use mysql when should i use oracle these kind of questions you should have clarity with what are the no sql databases what is cassandra doing on the table what is mongo db right how a no sql is different from a sql kind of databases how do i decide which database should be used in which kind of applications you should have a clarity on these grounds and why do you need to have this because at the end of a day when you work for any company they will pay you only because they are expecting you to build application and any application that you go and build small big super big application <laughs> every application has to be backed by some storage layer sir no there has to be some layer where you go and store the data which you can use for the processing have you ever thought of facebook you go and upload your images even you come back after years you are still able to see that image how facebook is doing it all thanks to the database right there has been a storage layer which does it so the third important thing that you need to learn to crack all these kind of interviews and their questions is 
questions around the data storage and this in itself you know contains if this is typically called as a system design stuff right so three basic pillars are you don't have to you know run behind the pillars to pillars and learn 100 things ab bas teen cheezon pe focus karo you learn one programming language do it well don't juggle between multiple languages don't get it confused don't go in this rat of you know i see students spending i don't know how many hours just looking for the answer which was better python better c++ better java better sir every programming language have some reason because of which they exist and at the level where you stand today it does not matter which language is better or which language is not good you pick one language be it python be it c++ be it java whatever that you are comfortable with but just go in depth good you know have a good hold on that programming language using that programming language practice well your data structures and algorithm and have a good understanding around on a high level you don't have to go and deep into the how it is built but more on like the uses per se of all these databases once you cover all these three things 90% of the questions that any company will ask you in their interview will be from these three section itself and on the top of it if you try to do something more right and those people who are not from the computer engineering background you can learn a few things around how internet works how the internet works say for example when i type www.facebook.com what happens internally how do the page load so little bit you know little internals of how the internet works a little bit around networking basics how the operating system works right that would be like icing on the cake if you do that that's typically you know that whole topic is called as system design so if you do that i don't see any reason why you shouldn't be the part of any of these companies if i take you the interview of google facebook microsoft linkedin not a single question in these companies are asked apart from the three things that i told you they will only ask you question coding that will be covered by the programming language and data structures and algorithm and then mostly around the data which will be there from the data storage systems am i clear people does it make sense cool so three things are you have to do if you are looking for a better software development roles software engineers role full stack roles in the market and you are aiming this big big companies you want to be a part of that this is only you have to do you don't have to you know get deviated with the 100 things uh i'll take this question but since you have asked you know your name i couldn't pronounce i'm really sorry for that but see as a fresher you need framework to build applications so after you have learned something let's say that in a college you are doing some project it's great that you learn a spring framework and um, you know build application that's great but do you need to mug up spring do you need to learn everything what the spring has no try to learn the concept for example if you are talking about the spring it works on a principle called inversion of control right ioc or dependency injection di so you should just know what inversion of control is what is dependency injection ye nahi ki aap sare annotations you start learning of spring right because these companies for example when you go and apply for google or uber or microsoft they will not ask you what is spring sir because this is just a technology no this will change one thing that i always tell my students when i teach or i talk in the webinars the it sector that you see sir there is only one thing which is constant and that constant thing is change change is the only constant and in this sector does not matter whether you are a developer does not matter you are a programming language does not matter that you are a you are a software tool if you don't improve yourself you don't upgrade yourself with the time the industry will throw you out c++ was a great programming language awesome but it didn't keep the pace with the change of internet when the internet was brought to the system c++ didn't improve itself to stay with the pace and that's why you see you know no company unless until it is a hardware based company where you build some kind of drivers people are no more using c++ for building the applications same thing for a software tool say for example uh, soa you know just to you know i don't want to go into what soa is but again it was not flexible it has become a technology of you know like of olds 
no company these days it was a very hot you know he was like a amitabh of bollywood the so of and it was you know so protocol right it was like amitabh of bollywood but these days it has become you know redundant all because it doesn't keep the pace with the required change so same thing happens with the you know software engineers also if you don't keep yourself improved upgraded right if you don't focus just on the concept and keep on learning you will also be you know so my point to answer your question because this was important so i just stopped here and answer your question is don't go for technologies or the frameworks you don't have to master them learn them use it build the application move on but what you have to focus on is the concept behind it so for example when you mentioned something like spring you don't have to be master of spring sir for tracking any of these company but yes you should be aware of the concept underlying what is there i hope that answered your question now let's move on people so i have answered what all the things that it is needed to make it big in the industry right so the step number 4 is that you know uh once you have learned all these concepts it's always better to bring it into action so well, once you have known a programming language you know how to write the code efficiently and you also know the data storage i think you know everything so while you are in your preparation mode the best way to kind of excel at it is build application because when some company interviews you they will ask you like do you have any experience building things up right so instead of just blabbering in words that i can do this i can do that you can actually so sir i have done it i have built it right and also most of the company these days not only they look at your resume but they also look at your github profile so when you build these application it also helps you to improve your github presence it helps you to show the world that what are things that you have already done so it's better said you no know, it's better done than said right so once you have this one more extra step if you have some time that you can spend some time building few applications which will give more confidence and uh, you know the more expertise before actually you are put into the interview scenarios now let's move on once this is done the number 5 is more from the perspective of uh how to you know how to make yourself employable so i always you know uh, i always say this thing you know as a as a, when some when you are preparing for a job you should not think yourself as just like a student today is a highly commercialized market sir so each one of us should treat ourselves as a brand and as a brand for success of any brand two things are very important right and you all will agree right for example why apple as a brand is so successful right even if they are selling the iphones at the price you can get to kidneys still people are open to sell their kidneys and buy the iphone yet because of two things one first of all the quality of iphone is definitely no doubt great and the number two is the brand value right when somebody carries a iphone they don't say that i have a phone they say that i have iphone right so same way you no know, as a individual when you are preparing for the jobs i strongly feel that you should consider yourself as a brand and you should know how to you know sell that brand so for that brand you need two things sir one is the quality how will you get quality for that i have only talked about the point you should be good in a language you should be doing data structures algorithm you should be building application you should be building you know you should be learning all these things so that's what where you work on the quality but let's say that you just focused on the quality you you know you lock yourself inside a door this is not a isf preparation this is not a upsc preparation that if you lock yourself you are done so it might be you are the great person you have learned everything you have all the skills but since you have locked yourself all the time inside the room the world does not know about you even that you are great you will not get the opportunities to even interview to aapko aata sab kuch hai par aapko puchne wala koi hai nahi because this is not a upsc you know preparation that there will be one fine day when the exam will happen you go and write all the answers that's not how going to work in this it sector so quality is good but just quality is not everything the second thing is you should be able to market yourself you have to network yourself 
For example, LinkedIn is a great platform for that today. A professional network where you can make connections, which can help you get the referrals, which can connect you to the multiple peoples. So as a person who was to, wants to be stay employable in the year 2022 and going ahead, <coughs> I'm telling you very practically, making a public professional profile is very important. You need to have a good network. You need to have a good connections. And making connections, good connections takes time, people. It's not like that ki, I'm done preparing now. Interview ki tayari ho gai hai. Ab main kal se sabko friend request bhejna chalu karunga. From tomorrow, I'll start sending the connection request to all everyone. And the day I send him the connection request, next day he will refer me also. Aapke bhaiya nahi hai wo. He is not your brother. He is not your uncle that, you know, you send connection request today and tomorrow you say, hi, can you refer me? No one. It doesn't work, sir. And if you're doing it, it's totally unprofessional. So it takes time to make connection. It takes time to do the networking also. So you should do right away. This is the time, you know, where you should spend some time for making some valuable, helpful connections. But again, if you do overdo this, like, you know, you are not spending time, you're not studying, but all the time you're on LinkedIn making connections. Let's say you have 10,000 connections, right? So you might get an interview opportunity, but at that time when somebody will ask you a question, you will just open your mouth and say anything, give this, right? So what is needed? Neither you should lock yourself in a room, nor you should be on the LinkedIn all the time. What you need to do is that have a right blend of both things. You should have a good mix of quality as well as your marketing strategies. And if you are able to strike that balance and you do it well, nothing can happen in a day. So you have to gradually improve this, right? Uh, that's what makes you employable. And if you have just hit that chord, there's a great number of opportunities that you will see in the market. And in the process, you learn other skills like soft skill. How do you talk? How do you write mails? How do you speak to the people, right? That's what make you, you know, this is a very important aspect, which is not taught, unfortunately. This is not being told to you people. But this is one of the very crucial steps to be a success in the today's market. Fair enough, people. Does it make sense to you guys? Yes, no. Perfect. So I'll move on. Uh, now, it's just like, you know, I also wanted to print up, you know, because you guys are budding engineers. So, uh, you know, few of you might be curious. Ki, what is the path of a, a typical software engineer, right? How does he grows? How does he moves on, right? So this is not a representative of any company because different companies have their own nomenclatures and there could be the different paths, the different companies, but on an average, on a high level, a general trend or general path of a person in a software world looks something like this. So for example, when you start in any company, it's mostly like a entry level where you start as an intern or uh, you know the apprentice engineer or a junior engineer, something like that. From the intern, then you move to the next step, which is the individual contributor. Now, individual contributor itself could have the different levels. Say, for example, a company could have a nomen naming like software engineer one, software engineer two, software engineer three. So normally, you will see on an average in any good company, uh, till the you know the number of experience goes to around ten years, eight to ten years. Normally, a person is in a individual contributor role itself. Now, once you move from there, like from a senior position, then uh, now it is not mentioned here in this image. You have two options, whether you want to move in a management role, right? That's where you try to become an engineering manager where you are responsible for like group of people, you manage them, you, you know, assign work to them, you see how your team is working. Or the parallel to an engineer manager is an architect, right? A staff engineer who typically is still contributing individually, but he's more interested in technology. He is more interested in the software. He's more interested in writing the code than managing the people. That's typically what I am doing right now in the LinkedIn as an architect, right? So that's what, so if you are someone who's more interested in managing people, typically engineering manager is what you should look for. Otherwise, you know, you move as an, you know, as an architect. And then when you move further, you become a director of engineering, then further VP of engineering, and then maybe like chief or CTO someday. 
so this is a normal career transition and all of us who are sitting there in the class we all should aim to be a cto right chota aim karna hi nahi chahiye na if you are aiming that let's try to suit it big so i believe all of us who is there in the class should aim to be a cto of some company some day and that's what a uh, you know uh, the ultimate level job as a technocrat as a engineer as a software developer we can think of in the it industry am i clear people does it make sense theek okay. hai let's move on people now i also wanted to talk about this mentorship and the coaching now few of the things that i see these days you know all thanks to the newly appointed you know i am seeing people who just got selected into the amazon or google or microsoft and they have started their youtube channels they have hardly started working for 6 months but they have so much of gyan to you know uh share to everyone so uh through this you know i i talk a lot you have to be you know a little careful when it talks about uh, you know deciding your career and choosing what to listen to what to not many of times we feel that okay youtube is free mein to kya ja raha hai right let's watch it but even when you were saying that i'm watching the free content sir actually that's not free even somebody is not charging you for watching a half an hour video but that half an hour that you have spent right and the and the motivation that you have got from it or the deviation you have got from it has a great impact on your career so when you are looking for your career shift when you are planning your career is very important that whom you are listening to right it's great you know if you are someone who feels that i am motivated enough i can do it myself and i'm a firm believer of it when i have prepared for my je itj if i talk talk tell you about that i never joined any coaching you know i just did it on my own in my house and i cleared it i'm very you know i'm very grateful and you know, i always boast about it that i didn't needed any coaching to clear my itj exam now all of my friend in my it days were almost 90% of there from the quota but the point why did realize over a period of time when i was in a engineering college and later on also in my early you know later career that it's not this everything that we know right there are a few things which we should learn from others and especially in terms of this job hunting especially in terms of this software world where there is a plethora of knowledge spread everywhere if you do a simple search you will get 100 suggestion 100 you know uh, the medium posts where everyone is there to give you a suggestion it's very easy to get misguided it's very easy to do 100 things and none of them is helping you to you know crack that one single thing so the point that i want to bring it here people is that be very sincere be very uh, you know diligent put a lot of your efforts mind presence everything to decide whom you are listening to because uh, a role of a mentor in your career journey is very very important because with that whatever let's say that for example if you try to do something yourself where you don't have much clarity it might take you months to learn from your mistakes and do it learning from a mistake is good but it's not very wise call if you can learn from someone else mistake and you don't miss do that mistake and then jump on the top of it i think it's a much better call to take in the today's high paced world so my point to you know my two cents from here is that you should be very much careful when you are listening to someone you should be very much careful when you are trying to take a path see that if that person has already done it what is the credibility how long he has done it somebody takes a success and fluke and then they just start creating youtube channels and you they themselves have not known what has happened and you just fall prey to it just you know getting uh, uh hearing about those you know things which is actually not going to work for you people so make sure that you spend good amount of time thinking that what is right for you for your career is it like full proof has it been vetted by the industry people right which will help you definitely to cut short your preparation time from their learnings you can avoid the mistakes right and you can also you know talk to them to motivate yourself in your path of success right so that's the importance of mentorship or the coaching that can add to your career but at the end of a day sir or the madam in this class it's you who have to do it right but the mentorship or the coaching what they can do is that they can you know make that path easier streamlined right see this getting job is no rocket science 
I have trained thousands of my students, and you know there are hundreds of my students who are there in the fan companies. So one thing that I've realized, no rocket science, but what it takes is a proper pattern that you have to follow. You have to follow the right path. You don't have to deviate yourself in hundred different things. Set a path, do it in a logical fashion, one after the another, and I think that's all it takes. So I hope I made this point clear, and you guys understand exactly what I mean to say here, people. Am I clear, guys? Does it make sense to you, people? So that's all I had to say, and I'd like to leave this, uh, you know, the session open for questions because I believe you might have many, many questions which could be only answered in the words of your question itself. So I'll be more than happy to take any of your questions. I'll try to be sincere and honest to myself when I'm answering your questions. And in the case, if I'm not able to, you can always, you know, I can always come back. You can always ping me over the LinkedIn and I'll be more than happy to answer your queries. Thank you, people. All right, so we would be starting with a Q&A session now. So I would request everybody who has their questions, who want to get some clarity or who want to ask or get some career guidance from Vishwa, they can ask their questions in the chat section or the Q&A section here. I think this we have a question already in Q and A. So we pick it up. Yeah. So the question is by Varsha. The question is, sir, I'm currently in second year in BCA, and I know C, C plus plus, Python, and now starting BSA with Java. Am I on the right path, and can I get job in good MNCs? Yeah. So Varsha, very nice that you know you're already started and you already have a good hold on few of the things, right? Uh. So. As I told you, to get into a, any good MNC, there are not many things that you need to know, right? So, if you have decided that Java is that language, it's great. You know, Java is one of the more very beautiful, flexible language. Almost 80% of the companies are working in Java. So, just my suggestion to you only will be just stick to the Java, and uh, make sure that next few months you are spending enough time on DSA, and your preparation strategy is well streamlined. There are few common mistakes which the people do, uh, and I think most of us will relate. So you guys can tell me in the chat if you guys can relate to me. One of the common mistakes that I see my students, and you know, uh, when I talk in the webinars, is you start learning data structures and algorithm, and then you feel that acha ho jayega mere se, and you jump to the platforms like Geeks or Geeks and Lead Code, and you solve few problems, and then you start realizing that it's not my cup of tea. Uh, and you start feeling more demotivated than motivated. You now, when you stop, you know, are not able to solve problem. You start feeling disheartened. Yar, ye mere se to ho nahi I will not be able to do this in the, you know, the real interviews. So this, I see most of the people getting demotivated when they start on directly on these platforms like Geeks or Geeks and uh, Lead Code. And the another mistake that I do see people doing is they come to these platforms like Geeks for Geeks and uh, Lead Code. They see a problem and they will just wait for five, 10 minutes. And then they will scratch their head and they will look into the solution. And when they look at the solution, they feel as if it is so easy, I can do that in the interview. And this they repeat for every problem. They see a problem, they see a solution. They see a problem, they see a solution. And when they go to the interview, even if the same question is asked, they get so nervous and they, the whole time goes in recollecting the answer, they just mess it up. Let me know guys, you know, if that makes sense to you people and you guys can relate. So what my suggestion to you is that you don't do these mistakes. When you're learning, when you're starting with DSA, you'll see a lot of demotivation in the beginning. You'll find that you're not able to solve problems. But what we need to do is that we have to accept it that it happens to everyone, it's normal, right? So yes, you can definitely make it to the big company, but just the start is not enough. You have to make this as a habit. You have to do it for a long time. You have to know what has to be done in a proper way, right? And this is a journey of at least few months, not days at least, right? So be consistent. Consistency is the key. And if you do it, I don't see any reason why you shouldn't be making it. 
I hope I answer your question, Varsha. That was a very insightful answer. I hope the question is answered. So moving forward to the next question, it's uh, there is a lot of competition in today's world. So what is the one thing that will make you stand out of the crowd? A uh, very valid question. And the competition is not only at the level of entry when you are in a college. I think competition these days are from the school level itself, right? Uh, when you are in 12, there's a competition in the going in the engineering college. When you come out, there's a competition for the job. When you are in a company, you have a team of five. There's a competition among the peers. Kis bar kis ko jada hike milega. So competition is always there. Now, one, one way which I feel that you stand out or you earn the respect in this industry is staying proactive, right? So there are two things, you know. You can either be reactive or you can be proactive. What reactive means that then only you're getting up off your bed. Your manager is telling you that do this work, then only you are doing it. Your professor is telling you that complete this assignment 10 times, then only you are doing it. These kind of, these are the examples of reactive. Till the time you keep on doing the reactive work when you are propelled by someone else to do things and your scope of work is only based on what others are telling you to do it. Uh, I'm sorry, but that's not enough in the today's world. You'll stay average. You will be always counted as average. The only way to stay apart from the crowd, earn the respect of the masses, is when you become, you know, when you yourself decide, what can I do extra? You yourself get up before your mom gets up. Then you'll see the praise of your mom. That, Are beta, tum so hi nahi rahe ho. Yeah. Are beti, tum so hi nahi rahe ho. Right? When you yourself go to your manager and say that, actually, I see there's area where I can contribute. That's where the manager will say you that you have exceeded the expectation. So in this age of competition, I believe instead of being reactive, which puts you in a league of average, which might be great for years back, but I don't think that is enough in today's world, right? What you need to do is that you have to take initiatives yourself. You have to be proactive. You have to yourself look around and see what can you do. And it could be anything that you're working. You don't have to wait for you going to a company and then all you become a proactive. It could be as simple as your home itself, right? Where you take initiatives to make the life of other family members better. It could be as simple as in a college project where like self, you know, you yourself go to your professor and tell that, okay, I want to work on something new other than the old boring project that you have been giving for the years. And it also works when you start working for the Google where you go and take an initiative that I have some alternate for Google Maps, right? So that's how you make the difference. And that's how, you know, bridge the gap. I hope I answered your question. That was a pretty insightful answer. So add to add to that, I would like to say that if you want to stand out of the crowd as a software development engineer, what is necessary is like you should not just focus on your college curriculum or what you're studying in college. As Vishwa mentioned, you should always look for opportunities outside the college wherein you can learn problem solving, where you can, wherein you can get new problems and wherein you are encouraged to find solutions to new problems. So going at the same, you can uh, also go for like some certification. So we have a certification by Upgrad Campus, which is Essentials of Programming course, which is designed by Yashwant, uh, Yashwant Kanekar, Kanetkar, who is the author of the best-selling programming book, Let Us See. So what happens when you take such courses is, is that you get industry exposure while you're taking such courses. The problems that you get, the kind of curriculum that you get in these courses is purely based from the industry experts and the courses are designed by the industry experts and at the same time you get a lot of career guidance as well and if you add a certificate with a programming language in your resume there are high chances of you standing out from other uh, applicants in an interview very true very true definitely so moving forward to the next question so the question is, uh, is there any IT field which doesn't require sitting on a computer whole day? <laughs> so uh, unfortunately, the answer is no. And I take this question as more of like, uh, uh, you know, uh, is there any way that I can, you know, fill my stomach without cooking food or, you know, buying food from the market? So. Uh, uh, just like, you know, you cannot survive without the oxygen. A software engineer has to, you know, a person who is in IT field, unfortunately. 
uh, there's a lot of screen time that we have to go through, but that's 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 what the reality is. So, uh, so you will have to end up a good amount of time if you're in IT field to sit and you know look behind the screen because that's what the bread and butter at the end of a day. I understand there are lots of health risks because of which, but if you plan your day well, right? You take a good breaks in between. You know, you rest your eyes, you you exercise in the morning and the evening. You have a good diet. Uh, I have been surviving this for years now, so and I pretty much don't have much health issues. So with that, I can vouch that you can still have the good health, even if you are, you know, standing on the screen for hours in a day. I hope that answered your question. All right. So moving forward to the next question, it's by Simran. Other than DSA, what skills are there required for fan companies? Yeah, so I think I already answered this question, but I'll again repeat. So for the fan companies, what they look for is the basics. So what you need to do is that a proper understanding of a programming language, data structures and algorithm, and how do you go and apply these skills for building the application? So application is very important. Say, for example, you have learned, say, queue data structure. Now, all of us in the class would be aware of what a queue data structure is, but that's not enough in the fan companies. So they're not interested in just knowing that you are aware of Q or not, but they are more interested in knowing that how do we go and apply Q for solving a problem, right? How can that Q data start to be applied to solve a real world problem? So apart from learning the data structures algorithm and typically a programming language, what you should focus on is the application of it, understanding how it will be used, right? And uh, you should have a proper strategy for it. I didn't know that's where, you know, again, the courses as uh, you know, uh, uh, it was already mentioned that uh, <clears throat> the upgrade is coming with the course, which is actually industry vetted. That helps you. Uh, they have kind of consulted with many, many industry experts with their experience of placing so many hundreds of engineers in the big, big jobs. So their learnings, their mistakes, they have tried to club all that together in a beautiful course. And I think that's where, you know, uh, you know, you can experience that, you can leverage that to make your journey of you know, jobs better. I hope that I answer your question, Simran. Yeah. All right. So moving forward to the next question. It's by Rashmi. Hi, sir. I'm working as a DevOps engineer in a service-based industry. Can you give me a little bit of guidance in my career? I want to join a product-based company in my next switch. So Rasmi, first of all, I would like to understand is that do you want to continue as a DevOps in the coming years or you'd like to make the switch because there's a little difference between what a DevOps engineer does and what a typical developer does, right? So I would like to understand, you know, first of all, that do you want to continue in the DevOps or you want to make a shift change in that? That's number one. Uh, so you want to, with no, I believe you mean to say that uh, you want to continue as a DevOps. Uh, then that's great, you know, actually, uh, Acha, you want to move to the core. You mean, with core, I mean that you want to move to a software developer roles, right? So again, the, the prerequisite for that is the same, Rashmi. You, know? you don't have to do anything extra. You have to be good in fundamentals, as I already mentioned. You have to be exceptionally good in coding, data structures and algorithm. And then you have some expertise around the implementation that how you go and build the application. With the DevOps, you already have some understanding, right? That how a development is bring to the operation, right? You might be already playing with tools like Kubernetes and Docker and all the CI CD pipelines. So those are great, but as a software engineer, you should know how to build that, right? As a DevOps, you use a tool, say for example, you know, uh, Kubernetes and all. As a developer, you should be aware of how to build those tools, right? So that, that change in the temperament, that change in the mindset has to be brought in. And I believe if you do that, uh, that's what it all takes, right? So you can definitely do it. All right, so moving forward to the next question. I am interning at a company as a quality engineer and will soon get full-time employment as a quality engineer. Can I still shift to development in another company after a year with full preparation? I'm confused if that career change can be done later. Can you please guide me here? So Purvika, actually, I can guide you with my own experience also. When I started my job, the first job that I had is like a QA engineer itself. And that too, not automation. I started as a manual QA engineer in Oracle. My first year of my career was that. And then the same company actually, actually, uh, 
I was actually interested into the development. So I took all that steps that it is needed to be a developer. I learned language. I wrote codes. I built few applications to make my managers con feel confident that I, you know, I can be a better developer. And then that's where, you know, where I stand today. So I can take you from my life example that I have done it. So I can always vouch for that. If you have the right temperament, if you are ready to work hard, what it takes to be a developer, doesn't matter, you know, you can start as a QA engineer in the same company or the another company. If you have the right talent, I think you can definitely make it. There's no late or there's nothing that it couldn't be done later. You can definitely do it. All right, so moving forward to another question. What's the path for getting an internship in second year? So there are two things, as I told you, for getting an internship, normally it's not, uh, you know, uh, there's no fixed openings for a second year grad in any company as such, neither your college will entertain you that. Normally people in the second year do projects in the college itself, or only if they are proactive, right? So to get an internship in the second year, again, you have to be little, you know, work on both the aspects, one, the quality, and the second is the network, right? Or to get a support from someone uh, who has been in this field of, you know, helping students. Say for example, a, a upgrade course here could be, a, you know, the great, thing because that way you will be able to learning things which will fulfill your quality parts but at the same time uh, uh, they will help you to connect to the things they will help you to connect to the networks which can help you provide that so my solution you know my suggestion to you in this regard is you work on your quality first of all sir so that you at least know self intensive -intensive, intensive karenge but agar aate hi nahi code likhna to ab kya karenge right so first work on the quality and the second thing is that from the you know from the beginning itself try to keep networking to the people connected with the right people you know so that they know about you they are aware about you and then you can say that okay i have three months in summer i'm open to work i'm open to learn and then you will see that you know there are many people who are there to help you out for getting the internships so there is no straight way it's has it's that you have to be proactive if you just wait ki someone will call me for the internship that's not going to happen the reactive thing will not happen you will have to be a little proactive to get a good internship in the second year all right so moving forward to another question we have our core subject as design and analysis of algorithms it is a really scary subject what are the important important topics in algorithms so scary because uh, you feel so it's uh, definitely not scary uh, and uh, and uh, many people have survived it including me so i'm still alive so that's a testimony that is definitely not scary and the strategy to do it is take its heads on first of all you have to understand normally what i feel the biggest mistake the people do is that they they start this topic with the great enthusiasm but since in itself is little complex to start with initial few days you are not able to solve things and then you start feeling that it's not your cup of tea you are not comfortable you might not be able to do it ever right that's when most of the people stop doing it and that's when you find it tough so my suggestion to you for this would be uh, that please be little you know uh, <clears throat> nice to yourself don't be too harsh and don't give a limit of say like a week or two only to master this subject it takes time it takes few months so what is important is sincerity and continuity if like you study today and then you take a one week break and then you again try to study this topic koi fayda nahi hoga you are just wasting your whole week so you have to be continue you have to at least make sure that you are spending 2 to 2 hours every day and few of the great algorithm if you i know if you ask me what are my favorite algorithm is typically something like dynamic programming right it's one of it's not actually the algorithm it's actually the programming paradigm which can substantially reduce you know let's say that if i go and solve a problem which takes like 10 minutes of time and if it falls under the category of dynamic programming i can do it in the, like 2 seconds so that's what you know the impact or the effect that it brings to the table right different kind of graph algorithm say for example we all are habituated to using maps google map right you are stuck in traffic you open your map and try to see which is how fast i can move all thanks to the graph algorithm you are able to solve that so all these are very fascinating provided you 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 you, you know you keep that hunger in you and you make sure that you are not demotivated by the small small toughness that you are seeing on the day to day life i think that's that's what it takes all right so moving forward with the next question i am working as a technical support engineer at a product based company i am from 2021 batch what shall i work on apart from dsa and what impact my current role will give by applying 
so uh, akansha uh, first of all you know when you're trying to learn something don't try to normally again it's a very common mistake you you start picking one thing and then you start thinking that what should i do next unless until you have done it so you're just telling me that uh, i have just picked on from dsa and what should i do next the dsa itself for you if you do it genuinely will take you months so what my suggestion is that don't think about 100 things and right? pick few things say for example you pick one language you put dsa say your target for the next few months is that you know next three months i'm not going to do anything but just focus on this my target is that i need to know all the important data structures and algorithm you should do it once you are done with that try to build some projects you know some applications for example let's say tomorrow you want to go and work for a social media company like facebook so it would be better if you build some kind of dummy social media application yourself that way you'll be able to put all your skills that you have learned as a as as a no as a programming language and dsa and that will give you more confidence so try to see and think which company you want to be a part of which domain they are actually building application and try to do some kind of pet projects post that but don't jump you know normally the mistake that we do is that we are sitting on the first floor and we are always thinking about the third floor right don't do that when you are on the first floor enjoy it you know spend some time have some coffee and tea there and then when you are done then do move to the next floor that's what you know the your strategy should be all right so moving forward to the next question in order to build build projects we must learn some technology how much importance should we give to learning new technologies being a student of btech and how important it is for interviews as a fresher so technology first of all you know uh, you should not give much importance to it you should give only that much importance which is needed to build an application okay so for example when you go to a hospital right how much importance do you give to the receptionist only that much ki where is the doctor's room right i don't know you know if you try to recall like last time we went to the hospital do you remember how was the face of the receptionist or what his name or her name was i don't think i don't remember i go to hospital very regularly but i don't remember who the receptionist was so the technology role is only of a receptionist right so you should take technology to build the application because today there is some something else tomorrow will be something else so but the key point is when you use any technology try to learn the concept on which it works what is the principle on which it works say for example if i take java java one of the most common framework or technology is spring so should i learn spring everything which is there not needed no no company will ask you a question around that but what should you learn from it there's a pattern inside it called as dependency injection inversion of control right those concept you should try to pick it up so i don't see much importance that you need to give to the technology you should do it as you know as little as it is needed to build the application focus on the basics sir focus on your you know fundamentals uh, and the things which will help you crack the job right so that's what my you know suggestion would be all right so moving forward to another question it's by avinash pandey hi sir i am first year csc student how can i how can i choose additional and write courses and from where which are useful in future so i think uh, i think that has already been answered right uh, when you are choosing a course uh, you should look at you know uh, who are the providers of the course what is that credibility have they done that in the past right is that course actually you know properly vetted because when you choose a course it's expensive both in terms of money definitely and also in the term of time because when you choose a course it's like a you know, good 6 months 10 months 12 months of course right so i you know i actually if you ask me i have been associated with many many platforms right and one of the platform which i give a lot of credibility right is definitely upgrad so if you ask me i think definitely upgrad has brought this excellent course where they have a industry vetted curriculum and uh, they they keep on improving you know learning from the mistake they have done and with the experience of all the learners who go through that course right and it's a continuous feedback mechanism that they bring into the table to make it more easier adaptable and at the same time productive for the learners so i might you know if you ask me one course i think definitely upgrad course could be one of the right fit for you uh, how you are trying to pursue your career all right so moving forward to another question sir what in career in cyber security and ethical hacking okay so uh, i think uh, if you guys stay close to the news at least the news related to the it few years back you would have heard about the news that uh, some million users yahoo users accounts were compromised 
and i think that happened couple you know couple of times in the past off late last year itself when everyone was going remote you would have heard that some user accounts of zoom has been compromised some recordings of the zoom has been made public right so as and when we become more and more internet savvy the more and more application we bring to the internet uh since everything is in a digital space everything is in a cloud the chances of it getting exposed to the miscreants right people who try to exploit your information on the internet is also on a high correct so every company these days you no know, no company in this world right now but every company including google facebook microsoft paypal zoom every company today are at the risk of cyber attack at the risk of the miscreants taking the hold of their website or an application so as a cyber security expert right you are supposed or ethical hacker you are supposed to make sure that organization or the company that you work for is secure from the cyber attacks it's secure from the hackers right and you keep on learning and improving so that your system couldn't be compromised by the others so again this is a specialized role which is getting a lot of traction because of the increasing security risk so again it's a it's a it's a it's a in depth in itself so if you are someone who is fascinated by this you know the uh, the the hacking stuff right you are someone who who likes revealing some kind of security threats to the application you are having a cryptic mind you, know? you want to work on some complex algorithms and problems i believe this could give you a lot of satisfaction but again this is a specialization which is built on some foundation if i have to go on third floor i always give this example you have to first set your base right right ab directly jump to nahi kar jaoge so to come to that specialization at least you should have some kind of foundation set right right so for that you have to become first a good software engineer so i'll suggest that first try to become a good software engineer you have your computer science fundamentals basics right and only when you are done that you can try to be have a specialized course where you get into the you know ethical hacking or you know cyber security i hope i answered your question abhi uh definitely so vishwa adding to that i would like to say that if you want to learn more about cyber security you should again have a professional certification that gives you an idea what is happening in the industry what the current industry trends are what are the problems that you must solve in order to get a good job or in order to be effective or stand out in the industry so you can check out a cyber security course by abgrad campus All right. So moving forward to the last question for today, it's by Alok. How is Azure? How is Azure related to future roles? If currently only person is making VM. So Alok, I think your question is a uh, uh, little, uh, you know, uh, wrong and out of context. So I think you know what Alok means with this question is that. he feels as if azure is making only vms and with vm people everyone in the class vm i think he means not vishwa mohan it's <laughs> virtual machines okay so uh, uh, i look like as to do a lot of things right see for example on a high level in very simple terms if i have to go and explain you any application that you build need three things it needs compute for doing the computation it needs storage and it needs network so any of the cloud provider that you see these days for example it could be azure it could be say like aws it could be like google cloud all these cloud provider actually provide you the solutions around all these three things around computation around the storage or around the network and the ready made services on the top of it so azure has much much things to provide as infrastructure as a service or platform as a service or software as a service and it's not just vm right and cloud is the way to go in the future because as we see you know you know because of the covid government restriction your offices are shut down there is no one to maintain the machines there is no one to put on the power or put off the power right so how do we run our infrastructure how do we run our application we need something which does not require any kind of manual intervention so that's where cloud is the future and uh, i don't see you know uh, just saying that it only spins up vm is not the right statement they have many many things to do like you know at least thousand times more than just spinning up vm so that's the future you know uh, there's no doubt on that 
all right so it was a very insightful session i hope everybody has got their questions answered okay so before ending i there's one question from rahul so i want to ask how can i tell hr about my skills for server admin post so first of all rahul for that you have to do a couple of things first of all you have to write for a uh, you know the correct company with the correct job openings right so you cannot randomly go to any company and say that you know hey i want to talk about the cyber admin post it doesn't works out that way because everyone is busy and so what you need to do you have to do a little research look on the different platforms say for example nokri linkedin or there are several platforms right now where people and the companies post their job and the description so you have to do a little research around that shortlist the companies who have who are offering the jobs in the area of your interest the next logical step to that is that you create a corresponding resume apply in those companies and in the case if they shortlist you definitely they will you know you will the first thing that they will do is that they will get a call from that chat and that's where you know you can always go and uh, communicate about your interest what skills that you have done and you know if everything go goes well i think that's that's the best match between you and the company all right so alok has a question my question was will it be good to stay as a per okay. I, yeah. I, i got the question so alok I, i understood you so i think what you mean to say is that as a as a software engineer if i'm only getting opportunity to build a vm and no other role that i'm doing uh, if that is the case then then i think you already know the answer that you're not learning much and as i told you in it sector change is the only constant and if you are stuck in a role or a company where you don't see any you know opportunity of growth or you are not learning yourself it means that you're trying you know you are actually going in a bad direction so it's a high time alok i'll suggest that either you talk to your team or a manager so that some interesting project would be put in else if that is not possible i think it's a high time that you should look outside for some another you know so first if you are not prepared prepare well make sure that you are employable and then i think it's a high time that you should move on you should not keep doing a job which is only asking you to spin a vm i think that's that's like you know uh, it might not be helpful and it might also not be exciting for you as a career all right so with this i hope everybody's questions got answered i hope you all had a wonderful session and learned something new because we show sure everybody did and if you are wondering how to turn all of this into a career in it i have shared a for google form which you can fill now and you can get a chance to get free consultation from a learning consultants i would be sharing the link to the form in the group as well so thank you so much to all the participants and vishwa for joining us here and thank you so much vishwa for answering all the questions or sharing so many insights from your career and from your experience with the participants thank you so much i hope you have a nice evening